Hello, everybody. Welcome to the very first historic episode of Guns Explained. I'm Cameron Porter, your host. Guns Explained is all about reducing fear through understanding. If you've ever talked to anybody about guns in America before, you know that there's a lot of fear, a lot of irrationality, and a lot of politics surrounding this issue. We want to get rid of all that, and our goal is to boil it down to objectivity, to the facts and the statistics and official analyses to really educate all of us on what gun control policy should look like and what's best for America moving forward. So to do that in this very first episode, we're gonna answer a question that many gun enthusiasts already know the answer to, but a lot of people who haven't had the opportunity to interact with guns in their lives would not know. And that is the difference between a single shot, semi-automatic, and fully automatic firearm. To help us do that, we're gonna be joined by Sheriff Todd Richardson of Davis County, Utah. He's gonna answer some of those questions. He'll be with us in a minute, but first, I wanna throw a shout out to Robin Hood Studios, the company sponsoring this episode of Guns Explained. Robin Hood Studios is a video production company that does corporate videography and video productions, including commercials and advertisements. So head over to their website, www.rhsvideos.com, to see some of their work. Now let's go join the sheriff. All right, here we are at the Davis County Sheriff's Office. We're here with Sheriff Todd Richardson, who has graciously agreed to be a part of this episode and help us explain the differences between these different types of actions. So thank you for being here, Sheriff. You're very welcome. So the first question I want to ask you is, is what is a single-shot firearm? It's just as it dis uh, depicts. It's a single bullet that's placed in the firearm, and it only can shoot once, uh, like a musket. You load the, the musket. You pull it back, you powder it, and, it, and when it fires, there's no ability for it to fire again. It already expelled its, its round. You have to manually put another uh, bullet in. Obviously, in the musket's case, it's, you'd have to front feed it, but um, on the rifles, they have cartridge rifles. You put one cartridge in, it fires, you open it up, you pull the cartridge, put another one in, and then it'll fire again. So what's a use case in the modern world? What's a use case for a single shot? Mostly what I see it uh, being used for right now is out in the sporting worlds when people are uh, bird hunting. They bird hunt with a, a shotgun and they uh, open it up, fold it down, throw one shell in, and that's what they use it for. Yeah, and that, that adds a lot to the skill component. Absolutely. You get one chance at that bird. That makes sense. Absolutely. So what would then be, I mean, what would then a semi-automatic then. So we know what single shot is. What's a semi-automatic? So a semi-automatic is the ability, uh, like what I carry on my personal weapon, is a, uh, a 1911. So it's the ability to put a magazine that has several shots in it. So if you pull the trigger once and, and keep the trigger back, uh, the trigger uh, mechanism itself will uh, hold it from firing altogether. There's a sear pin in there that prevents it from, from happening. But you release it and it recycles itself, and then if you pull it back a second time, it'll go off. Okay, so, so basically the reason it's semi-automatic is because it, it does kind of half the work for you. Mm -hmm. So it'll reload a, new it reload a new round into the chamber, but it won't fire it. Right, until you recycle okay. that trigger mechanism. Wow, okay, that's pretty cool. It is. <laughs> uh, so then what would, a, what would a fully automatic be? So what's the difference between a fully and a semi-automatic? So a fully automatic is carte blanche, uh, that's, the, that's the fun thing to fire. It's uh, when you pull the trigger, if you have a 30 round magazine, as long as you pull that trigger and keep it depressed, uh, it'll, it'll feed all the ammunition through it as, as much as you have, obviously, in the magazine. So wow. fully automatic, it spits out uh, a, lot of, a lot of bullets. Wow, so okay, are fully automatic weapons available to the general public? Absolutely. Yeah? Yes. So how, would, how, would, how does somebody go about obtaining a, a fully automatic firearm? So fully automatics uh, are, obviously you can own them, they're perfectly legal to own, they're just more, uh, uh, it takes more time to get it, there's obviously background checks that have to occur, there's uh, some uh, paperwork that you have to do through the federal government, as well as the fact that because there's only a certain amount that's out there in the market uh, prior to 1986 is what you actually can buy. Oh. It's pushed the price of a fully automatic weapon up uh, to the point where you're, you could be paying you know, uh, tens of thousands of dollars for, for you know, the weapon, which is one of the things that's prohibitive to owning a, a fully uh, automatic firearm. So all you have to do is be able to go to um, uh, the ATF, make sure that you articulate exactly uh, what you're buying, 
uh, that it's registered to you, you pay the, the stamp tax, and uh, once you've done that, if you have a, a weapon that you were going to be buying, that goes to their background check, and then they allow you to purchase it. Wow. So what, you mentioned 1986, so mm -hmm. you're only able to buy an automatic firearm that was manufactured before 1986. Yes. What uh, happened in 1986? Well, uh, again, the, the, the United States government, uh, in their fine wisdom, uh, did some uh, negotiating around with a couple uh, ammunition and, and, and um, weapons bills. And one of those uh, stipulations that were put in there was the stop of sale of any future weapons uh, after that point, and it was 1986. And so um, there's, I, I can't remember the exact number, but there's roughly about 130,000 uh, machine guns, fully automatic machine guns that are out there. and. Uh, uh, that's what's pushed that the market value up of all those weapons so is yeah, okay. because there's only a limited amount. Now there are people that can have the newer ones. Obviously, uh, uh, firearms uh, uh, distributors they can actually own them. They really can't sell them to the public, but they can own them. Law enforcement we have the ability to have them. Military has them. So there still are new newer weapons out there in the market, but it's it's a little bit harder when you're uh, a citizen to. Uh, obviously get a, a new one uh, without getting that uh, a part of the old one to replace it. Wow, so. that's really fascinating. I had no idea about that. Yeah. So as a, as a law enforcement officer, mm -hmm. what type of, you know, what type of action do you find yourself using most? The semi or the pulley or the... Right now I carry a six hour 1911, which is a semi-automatic weapon. Okay. And that way I can uh, carry the magazines on my belt. It's quicker to reload. If I ever had to get into a large uh, fight with a weapon, that I've got plenty of ammunition on me, that I, I have the ammunition when I need, and, and uh, every time I pull the trigger, hopefully uh, there's something there to go off, so. Awesome, so quick recap. A single shot firearm is a gun that you have to manually load and unload every time you wanna fire a round of ammunition. A semi-automatic firearm does the loading process for you, but you still need to pull the trigger every time you wanna fire. A fully automatic firearm does both. It will, manual, it will automatically load each round and all you have to do is hold down the trigger and it will just keep firing. Now, we're about to do some fun stuff. Sheriff Richardson agreed that for our demonstration segment of this episode, he would go up with us to Wasatch Firing Range with an automatic weapon that he has access to as a law enforcement officer so that we'd have an opportunity to really demonstrate exactly how these different, op different firearms operate. So let's go, let's go do that. Okay, so this right here is actually a, it's a savage uh, bolt action, but on a, on a single shot type of a rifle, such as a, an 1874 Sharps, they would have a, a mechanism by which you take your bullet and you would place your bullet right into the chamber and then he'll lock it down. And then right when it's locked, it's ready to go. So there's no other bullets in it and the only one that you're going to shoot is the one that's in the weapon. Okay. Again, now if you wanted to fire a second one, you'd have to pull it open, remove the, the cartridge right there, the expended one, and then he'd place another one in there and lock it back down and again, he could fire again. So that, in general, is, is how a single shot uh, uh, rifle works. So we're moving on to the uh, M4 platform, which is this, it's a semi-automatic rifle. And obviously, if you look down here, you can see you have multiple bullets that are placed into the magazine, and the magazine will then be placed inside the weapon, and then you lock the chamber, and at that time, the difference between the single shot and and the uh, semi-automatic is every time you pull the trigger it unloads and loads a new round in there so you're ready to go all right so what i'm going to have you do is put the magazine all the way up into the rifle so now when we're going to get this thing ready to fire you pop the recoil on the left side there you just tap it with your palm brings the, the slide forward, now you've got a, a, a chambered round right into your rifle and it can fire. So take your safety off, 
And now you're hot and you can fire. Now again, every time you pull the trigger, it's going to expel a round as long as you have rounds in the magazine to feed it. This is my very first time shooting a fully automatic weapon. And I have to say, I'm pretty excited, but I'm nervous too. So it's going to be really interesting to see what this can do. All right. So as you can see, this is uh, somewhat the same platform as an M4. Uh, this is the old M16 platform actually introduced in the 1960s. Um, so everything is basically the same. Uh, all your bullets are uh, put into the magazine. There you I go. I got this. I got this. There you go. Oh, yeah. All right. So when you're ready, you feed the magazine. So when you're ready, again, you don't yeah. have one in the chamber yet. And so, in fact, you know, let me make sure that this is in and locked. Someday, when I'm all grown up, I'll be able to do this myself. <laughs> okay. okay, same thing again. You're going to put your magazine in and lock it. Okay, on this back side, you just take your palm and hit that button right there with your palm. Okay? Okay, that's actually just like my MNP 15. Right. Now take your thumb and you're going to switch it over one more switch to where it says full. <laughs> and now you're ready. Where it says full. Okay, here we go. Let me get ready for that. There you go. Now I know what's going down. Good. Should I have my foot like back so like that? So this or? is what you want to get in that power stance. So okay. you're, you're leaning into the weapon and let it kind of walk back at you. You feel that power? Oh yeah, there's no way to be accurate though. No. There's no accuracy here, but no. that is a lot of fun. That is a lot. Of, can I take a few more rounds? Yeah, go ahead okay. and uh, just again aim low and let it work its way up. Oh, oh, I'm out. Now that was 30 rounds. So you can see how fast oh, yeah. those rounds are coming out there. You could burn through those very quickly. Oh, yes. All right, well. So I want you to do one more thing for me. Sure. OK. And I'm going to have you just hold this and pu push down the same thing. Pull the trigger and just hold it. Keep the barrel down range. And you're going to see how fast an 800 cyclical round will go. OK, you're going to hold me up yes, again like I'll, you were before? I'll hold OK, up. sweet. Okay, so okay. now I... Yep. Yep, yeah. now you're ready to go. Safety's already off, my bad. Okay. Okay. So, keep it down range. All right, you're just hold it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my jeez. I think I got smoke in my eye. Oh right there, you can see that that's where the oh. coolant for the barrel is right there. Oh my goodness gracious. You can see the smoke. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but you can see the oh, yeah. smoke coming off of there. Just accumulated from that. Oh my gosh, that was 30 rounds. Yes. That was incredible. So just yep. a reminder, older models, if it's pre-1986, you can purchase fully automatic weapons, but at this point they're extremely cost prohibitive because they're basically antiques. So you're talking tens of thousands of dollars for a single fire. <clears throat> and then of course, anything that was manufactured before 1986 is no longer available on the market uh, for normal citizens. Is that accurate? Yes. Great. That was a lot of fun. I'd never shot a fully automatic firearm before, so that was a major lesson for me. And it was a lot of fun, it was eye-opening. You know, it was very difficult to be accurate. I would dare say almost impossible to be accurate with an automatic firearm, which definitely limits its use cases but it was an incredible experience. So special thanks to Sheriff Richardson and the Davis County Sheriff's Department for helping us out with this episode. Thank you for watching. Again, shout out to Robin Hood Studios for sponsoring this episode. Their website is rhsvideos.com. If you need video production, they're the ones to do it for you. So again, I'm your host, Cameron Porter. Thank you so much for joining us for our very first episode of Guns Explained. We'll see you next week.